And you're welcome back to the show. Uh, best of luck to Lopez uh, in the future. And I'm sure we'll be speaking to him again in the, over the next weeks or months to see how he's getting on over in Lockborough. Like I said, we, we wish him all the best. And uh, we can't wait to see him either in one of the big colleges in America or over in the NFL in a couple of years' time. But let's get back to it. We're done with the AFC. Let's get on to the NFC West. Um, and we have to start with the Super Bowl champ. LA Rams. We ended the first part of the show with an LA team. Let's start the second part with an LA team. Of course, like I mentioned, Super Bowl champs. You, everyone, they are the they are the team with the target on their heads. Somehow, they were able to bring in the likes of Bobby Wagner and Allen Robinson and pay Aaron Donald a load of money. And I think they gave uh, Matt Stafford a new deal and Cooper Cup got a new deal. Um. But those uh, those additions are scary to add to that team. Um, they didn't lose many people either. Um, Von Miller was probably the biggest loss that they've had. Um, so that that will definitely be felt. Um, Andrew uh, Andrew Whitworth, of course, is retired now in left tackle. So Joe Noteboom is currently in the depth chart as the starting left tackle. So we'll see how he'll be able to perform if he is indeed the starting one. But Jake, I don't know what more we can say about the LA Rams. They are the best team in football and they haven't done anything in the off season to make me think any differently. Yeah. I mean, I just think they found like when somebody in a game finds an infinite money glitch, that just seems what they've done to be able to afford all these big names. They don't give a fuck about draft picks. don't give a fuck about money. They just do what they want. They win games because of it. So uh, I think trading for Matt Stafford or acquiring Matt Stafford was one of the best moves they could have made. Um, and then on top of that, they just piled on and got excellent players around excellent players um, just to build up an already beefy team. It's already scary how good they're going to be. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly it and you know like that in the last off season they lost their defensive coordinator Brandon Staley to be the LA Chargers head coach but they haven't lost anyone this off season oh no they did sorry they lost Kevin O'Connell their offensive coordinator he went to the Vikings mm -hmm. so and um, they have lost someone and um, it's the cost of success I guess you know other teams want to replicate it. but uh like that I I can't see anything in terms of there is some issues with the running backs in terms of the Henderson and Akers at the moment are, are struggling with injuries. Sony Michelle has gone off to Miami. Um, so it'd be interesting there to see they did a uh, draft a running back in the fifth round this year. They actually had draft picks, believe it or not. <laughs> People think that they don't. They had some draft picks and they got uh, Kyron Williams in the fifth round as a, as a running back. So he's a potential backup if there is issues with Cam Special Akers. teams player. <laughs> fifth round pick, <laughs> running back. He's a special teams guy. I'm sorry. Yeah. On defense, Aaron Donald doesn't retire. He gets a new contract. He comes back again to wreak havoc on the NFC West. Um, Jalen Ramsey's cornerback partner is gone Darius Williams got that massive contract at the Jaguars and um, so it looks like at the moment I think it's Troy Hill who's going to be playing opposite him in the other cornerback position so I'd be interested to see if teams maybe target that side of the field more but we saw last year that Jalen Ramsey moved around a lot actually he didn't stick on the one side of the field so um, it's definitely going to be tough and like I mentioned Bobby Wagner you know Breaks my heart to see him in LA Rams gear. Um, it's going to break my heart to see him come to Seattle in uh, LA Rams jersey. Break your heart again when he picks off Drew Locker, Geno Smith, and runs it back. Oh, when, he, when he sacks the life out of him there, probably on like a third and 16, where he just flips <laughs> through the middle. That's when it's going to destroy me even more. I'm going to feel that sack. But um, yeah, so like I said, the LA Rams, they're the best team in the division. And it's it's I can't see anything, especially with how weaker the other teams have gotten. Um when I when I talk especially about the Seahawks and one other team that I'll get to. But yeah, it's 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 tough to see anybody topping them this year. Yeah, I think they're the, they're probably they're, well they tie it well they're obviously a good bit better than any other team in that division. They're taking advantage of a, a fairly weak division in the grand scheme of things. Next up is probably the Cardinals or something like that, but the 49ers have kind of lost a lot and aren't going to be playing as well. So 
I just their team that is just going to get to the top of that. I don't, I don't think it's going to be particularly diff- difficult for them to be the top of their division. Yeah. Well, that's what you mentioned, the Cardinals. Let's move on to the Arizona Cardinals. They're coming into this year, of course, losing that wild card game to the Rams. They haven't brought a lot of players in of note this year. Marquise Brown is part of that trade with the Ravens. Um, he's reuniting with Kyler Murray from college. They've lost some really, really like important and veteran pieces all along that field. The likes of Chase Edmonds, Chandler Jones, Christian Kirk, Jordan Hicks. There's some really big losses there that do worry me because all the news off season, of course, has been about Kyler's contract. But I don't think enough has been talked about the fact that you know they've lost some really, really bad. Uh, they've lo- not lost really, really bad. They've lost some really, really good players. Yeah, they've lost a lot of good players and haven't really replaced them with even better players or players around the same skill set. I mean, they lost Christian Kirk and brought in Marquise Brown, but who's really high on Marquise Brown at this stage in his career? Uh, I don't know. I just don't know what to make of them. This whole thing with Kyler Murray seemed to wipe away any other news to do with the Cardinals. Um, And then they still have, uh, what's his face, the head coach there, who seems... Kingsbury seems to kind of not know what's going on a lot of the time. It doesn't really play or plan game schedules really well. So I don't know. They're a fairly confusing team. They had a lot of talent, and now they just seem to lose a lot. Yeah. Given the contract extension in the offseason as well, he was. So he's going nowhere for the foreseeable. And it's well established that uh, what we've seen that the, the, the issues that Cliff Kingsbury has had with his teams, that when it comes to the second half of seasons, they start so well. When it comes to the second half of the season, they seem to fall off a cliff. Um, and it's it's interesting because they st- if they start hot, and n- starting hot is going to be difficult for them this year because they've lost uh, DeAndre Hopkins for the first six games of the season as well through suspension. So, you know, and with Christian Kirk gone, you have an aging AJ Green out there. Um, like I said, Marquise Brown, you have... Uh, Zach Ertz yeah, out there, too. Yeah. So, but, so we'll have to wait and see. And, you know, James Conner, of course, was a stud last year running back. So we'll, we'll see if he can continue that on the defense. Of course, you have J.J. Watt. But at this stage of his career, you you say that, but you have to say till for how long. You know, you have J.J. Watt, but for how long? Because injuries are taking a toll on him and he... You know, he's one of the greatest hype men. You'd want him in your locker room all the time to just hype you up the whole time. You'd run through a brick wall um, with uh, JJ Watt hyping you up. And an all around good dude as well. But uh, how long, as you said, how long you get him for? Maybe a game, half a game. (laughs) You never know. know. Yeah, it could be the first play, it could be the last play in game week 18. You know, we don't know, but it's going to happen. That something is going to, he is, some sort of injury is going to pop up somewhere. Um, with Buda Baker now as being the sort of leader as well on that defense, um, fantastic player. And Marcus Golden is staying around too after having a career year last year in terms of sacks. So um, there are still pieces there. But there is a bit of worry, and and that's one of the that's the team in the AFC West that I worry a bit for as well. It's often the pieces behind the pieces that you need to have, yeah. especially when you have players like JJ Watt who isn't going to play full games a lot of time, miss a couple of games here or there. You have to have guys behind them that are not just backups; they have to be almost starters as such. And I don't know if the Cardinals have that. No, I, I and I, I fully agree with you there. So it, it is it's definitely an interesting space to watch out for because uh we'll have to see what they do. Um but I that's what I said. I do fear um for them this coming year. We'll move on to the San Francisco 49ers. Um of course the big news was well, there's a couple of pieces of news actually with the 49ers this offseason. The big news was officially now Jimmy G is no longer the starter. He's available to look for a trade. Still haven't found a trade yet for him. And um, so Trey Lance is, is now QB1. But Devo Samuel as well getting his extension, his con his new contract with the team after um a long standoff. They're a team that I think could do quite well this year. Um, Trey Lance, he had, I think he, 
he had a perfect passer rating actually against the Packers in that preseason game last week. Uh, 158.3. I think that's a perfect passer rating. I still don't understand the per- the passer rating though. How 158.3 is perfect, but look, we we'll, we won't get into that. Um. But, like, Jake, I, I'll let you go first on this one. Your initial thoughts of the 49ers and, and how you how, how you think they are going to get on coming into this year? I don't, like, I don't think they're going to do particularly well there. I don't think they're going to be last in the division, but I certainly don't think they're going to be – I think they're going to be third, to be quite honest with you. Um, almost a rookie quarterback, Trey Lance, there, because he's what played, I don't know, 20 snaps in the last season, so – can't really expect him to do extremely well. I, I assume he's going to have some of them games where a mobile quarterback gets the better of a defense because they don't know how to plan for him. But as always, a defense, when they watch a couple of weeks of game film on him, they're going to know how to hit him and how to contain him. And then he's going to have to rely on his passing. And I know you said he had a hundred or his perfect pass rating, but that is a preseason game. A lot of the time, defenses don't play their exotic looks or their actual game. They're just playing a vanilla base defense, so nobody gets a look on their defense. So um, I just don't think there's going to be a lot of sustained success for him. He does have some nice pieces. Devo Samuel, he has um, George Kittle, obviously, um, to rely on these guys, but uh, I just don't see them. Um, topping the NFC West, or I, th- I think it's going to be third for them. Yeah, well, you, we can't forget that they were one game away from the Super Bowl last year. They were in the NFC Championship, and it came down to the very last play against the Rams, um, for them to beat the 49ers. So there is talent in this team, and like that, I think that they actually have got some really strong pieces together. Like the running back room is strong with the likes. Uh, Elijah Mitchell has been. Uh, was really good last year. The uh, Jeff Wilson is going to be back too. You have Trey Sermon there too. That didn't really get a fair crack at things. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see if if Debo is going to still do that dual threat role where he plays a bit running back too. Um, of course, if with Brandon Ayuk, who I'm hearing is having a fantastic training camp after sort of being out in the cold a little bit last year. Uh, Juwan Jennings showed quite a. Uh, showed us, sorry, in the uh, postseason last year that he is actually someone that could take a step this year too. Um, like you mentioned, George Kittle, a fantastic uh, tight end as well. So they have some really, really strong pieces on offense. Yeah, they do. I know they do. I know, but when you put in a, a whole different quarterback into this mix, and I know Kyle Shanahan's kind of offense is always going to be explosive, just the way they do things. I just don't know that's it suits me or my head it suits Jimmy Garoppolo more than it would a Trey Lance because he's gonna want to run more and that's gonna change the whole thing and then when they figure out how to stop him running it's gonna change everything again so I don't know I wish I had as much optimism for you actually I don't know why you're having optimism for this team they're in your division I know but I've got I see good players and that's the one that I you know you keep an eye on the division that you're in you keep an eye on those teams around you and that's I've just seen like good players on that team, and they still they have a good system set up, especially on offense. Um, and then like we haven't even talked about the defense with the likes of Fred Warner. Uh, you've got uh, Nick Bosa there as well. You know Drake Greenlaw. Um, you you know Eric Armstead. You know there's some really really good players up front there. Um, you know Emmanuel Mosley. You know Cardavius Ward, S- Jimmy Ward. I should say as well. You know they've got some really really good pieces on defense too. And um, I think it was is it the Mario Davis is the defensive coordinator there. He had a really good first year with them. Um, and I think I th- I just think that they're going to go from strength to strength. And I think that they could be an early lock for that second position in the NFC West. Yeah, man, I, I think third, you think second. It's not going to be a whole lot of games that decides which position they're in, really, if we come to think of it, because if the Cardinals start strong and the 49ers start weak, then the whole thing's upside down. But mm-hmm. I think it's – they're not. we can both agree that they're not going to come last, they're not going to come first in that division. Yeah, I, I think so. I think, I think you're right with that. Um, but let's move on to the final team uh, of the night, and that is, of course, uh, the Seattle Seahawks. My – Seattle Seahawks. Um, it's been a turbulent off season, losing um, stalwarts like Russell Wilson and Bobby Wagner, um, also cor- talented quarterback TJ Reed. The unfortunate news that Chris Carson had to retire due to his neck issues. 
Um, well, not not officially retire, but step away from the game for for at least a, a period of time. Um, they brought in some really good draft uh, prospects, uh, the likes of Charles Cross, uh, uh, who was a first round pick at left tackle, who has um, been impressing and had a really good preseason game last week. You know, they've made steps to fix the offensive line. Kenneth Walker in the running back position, I think, is going to probably be their standout player. Uh, but for me, obviously, the, the the all the talk is Geno Smith, Drew Locke, who's going to be the quarterback, and it's 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 quite poor. And but for me, the story is the defense, and this is a defense that I think are going to surprise a lot of people this year, and just how good they are and how fast they are. Um, I I think back and look, it's totally different levels, but I'm just trying to make a comparison at the moment. But uh, we were at the I was at Shamrock Ball there a couple of weeks ago, of course the Rebels against UCD. And when I was looking at the pregame and the teams were warming up, I looked at, you looked at the Rebels and you could tell that guy plays on the line. That guy doesn't, just size-wise, you know? I couldn't tell with UCD. UCD had guys that were all similar. So you had guys on that defensive line that were quite, I'm not going to say they were small, but they weren't like the regular, stereotypical sort of defensive. They were so fast. So fast, and that's one of the things that won them that you know, that game was how fast they were, uh, pass rushing, and gave the quarterback Ty Henry of the Rebels no time at all, um, in the pocket to throw and look out for people, and that's similar. I think we're going to see with the Seahawks. Their defense is going to be so quick this year. Um, their two uh, draft picks, Ty Tariq Woolen and uh, Cody Bryant, on the in the cornerback positions are going to be really quick and um, you've got some really good pieces there on the pass rush as well that they've been missing um, but I'm going to stop talking because I'll talk all day about them Jake and I know you want to get into them so um, just from an outsider's point of view your view on, on the Seahawks this year I don't really want to pile on as such there I just <laughs> have to say just I have to say a few things uh, I do have I do I do think losing Russell Wilson was probably the better thing for the Seahawks in the long run um, because while I think he's a strong quarterback, I don't think he was going to get that team to a Super Bowl in, in his tenure there. So getting rid of him, acquiring some things for him was probably the best thing he could have done. Now, you're just left with a Geno Smith, a Drew Locke problem, but that's realistically not – it's only going to affect you this year. You're going to draft a quarterback next year, and you had a strong draft this season, so it's really just going to set up a quarterback in the future. You picked up Charles Cross, who I think he's going to be good, but he's not maybe – what who you wanted at tackle then, but he's still one of the top quality uh, tackle prospects that was in the draft that was available at the time. So you're really just going to put that quarterback in next year into a position where he's going to be protected and he's going to have time to, you know, kind of learn learn his craft and stuff like that. So who, while it's sorry, not... Sorry, Jake, who was the guy that you got? Was it Evan Neal? Evan Neal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's... Uh, oh, right tackle. Uh, Epi Equanu is the other one that the Panthers it, got. From reports I've heard, yeah. he's the one that's been struggling actually. Oh, has he? Yeah, yeah. I only really know that uh, Evan Neal's been like he's had his few kind of password struggles and stuff, but uh, as most rookies would have. But uh, otherwise, having a strong camp, and then I haven't really heard about Charles Cross, and I haven't heard about uh, Iki Equanu either. So that's the beauty of that that you haven't. And let's say we've heard nothing about Charles Cross, so that means he's not doing anything wrong. Yeah, a, yeah, an offensive lineman. Yeah, like you, yeah. you only ever hear if they're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, it's. I think it's a good thing that uh, you picked them up. It's obviously this season isn't the Seahawks season as like the Giants. It's not the Giants season. So um, it's good to build for the future and have building blocks in place. And if if he could be there for ten plus years, you're gonna have uh, a good um, good future ahead of us. Yeah. Totally. Um, okay. Very quickly, then, Jake. Before we wrap up, your uh, order. Pecking order, how would you think the division is going to finish? Um, I'll go Rams, Cardinals, Niners, Seahawks. Okay. Well, mine's quite similar. I'm going to go Rams, 49ers, Cardinals. Sorry, and Seahawks. So yeah. we'll, we'll we'll mix up the middle and then we'll agree on the, uh, the first and the fourth. But I think that is a perfect place to wrap up um, our edition of our preview, I should say. It's not every edition of the show because... Uh, after the break, the <laughs> this is the show. Uh, 
But when we we are going to take a quick break in a second, but when we come back, we will be speaking to Tig Leader, of course, about Ireland's Kicking King Championship and, of course, his time over in the CFL. But before we do take the break, if you aren't already, make sure you're following us on our social channels. They're right there below us on the screen. Um, if you're listening to the podcast version, Twitter at UndercenterPod. The same for Instagram at UndercenterPod. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Undercenter Podcast. We have a lot of really cool stuff coming up uh, when the season starts. So you definitely want to be subscribed to it for that. Uh, audio side of things, if you want, Undercenter Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find us there. Make sure you're sticking to our social medias because we will have a very cool announcement coming next week. Something that you can get involved in. So you definitely want to want to be close to our socials. Keeping an eye on it for that. Jake is wondering what the hell is he talking about? I can see that in your face. But like I said, we're going to wrap up this part of the show. We're going to take one more break when we come back. Tight leader talking about Ireland's kicking king championship. 